Hey guys, Blue and Darian. Ow. I'm man. introing. This is the Darian show. That's rough. Did you see that? I hope you saw that because that was uncalled for. They saw it and they agreed with it. Hey everybody, I'm Darian. I'm Julio. And we're with DNC Marketing. Today we're going to be talking about where great branding makes you money. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, I'm gonna just slide it on over to Julio and you can tell us where great branding makes us money. Okay, so we're gonna start this off pretty simply. You wanna start in the very beginning because your brand um, has to be cohesive throughout, right? So in the very beginning, you wanna look at your overall sales funnel. And by sales funnel, I don't mean these, I, I'm sure you've seen it before, right? You probably got a free download or something like that where it's like, hey, check out my sales funnel. And it basically shows their homepage and then it shows their checkout page and they're like, there's the whole funnel. And it's like, that's stupid. <laughs> like, that's not the whole funnel. The whole funnel needs to consist of emails. The whole funnel needs to consist of excuse me, both organic and uh, paid ads. Like how are you actually getting these customers um, to engage with you? How are you getting these people to register for your webinar? Or how are you getting them to uh, join your email list? From there, how are you um, talking to them? How are you selling to them? Um, what do you have as backups as far as your email sequencing goes? Do you have nurture sequences? Do you have sales sequences? Um, like who, that's gonna also depend on who you are. Are you a blogger that's just trying to get information out there or are you um, a marketer that's trying to sell a new course or um, trying to present a new concept to something that has already been pre-established? So Darian, what do you think uh, about what I've said so far? Okay, so I like to think of it in maybe more simple terms because I have a simple mind. So <laughs> thinking like, about it from like the- simple jack. If you think about it from a customer perspective, I like to think of it as a journey, right? So from the moment the customer sees you for the first time in whatever format, mm -hmm. if that's in person, um, on Facebook, they stumble on your website, whatever it is, moving them from that first impression to a sale and then beyond the sale, that's the journey there. Mm -hmm. So if you were to reverse engineer that journey for your customer, you need to look at every single aspect and every possible point where your customer could drop off. And then you need to try a re-engagement tactic there. So that's, that's interesting because, okay, we, we've actually argued about this before, where you, I, you like to take the end result and work backwards. Yes. I hate that. I can't do that. I don't it's a different mind. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, just doesn't make sense to me. That, that's why your mind is backwards. Um, mine goes forward, right? It's forward thinking. It is Never look back. a massive improvement based off of my personal belief. Um, but the idea is that I start it in the very beginning and move forward. I say, once I do this, how do I get from here? And what happens if they do this and et cetera? Then you, but you do it the opposite. So I want to explain how that works. Cause I think it's more, it's probably easier. And I may be speaking for myself here, but it may be easier for people to start and then play like the chess game that is business versus have the end in mind and reverse engineer it. So I think it depends on how much information you have and how you work, right? For example, I, I think you have trouble even moving forward with that you because have you, you, without all the information that you have from your corporate sales experience and online sales experience and all of that, yeah. if you didn't have all of that, you'd be working from a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. So for people who don't have like all of the sales experience and things that we have, starting from the beginning can be incredibly intimidating and you can't, you can't actually see the journey yet because you haven't gone through it as your customer. But if you start from the end, if you think of it like, okay, my customer has made this purchase, how did they get here? Mm -hmm. Now let's work backwards and every time you reach a point, let's think how'd they get there? How'd they get there? How'd they get there? And you might have multiple answers, which is a good thing because if your customer's coming from multiple points, say they made a purchase, they bought your, um, I don't know, your journal. How did they get to your journal? Okay, well maybe you are writing blog posts and talking about it, or maybe they're on your website and they found the product page. Okay, they're on your website, they found the product page. How did they get there? Maybe they came from social media, or again, a piece of content, something like that. Well, how did they get to that content? Okay, well maybe you're putting out ads or organic posts advertising that content. So if, you're, if you see this on a piece of paper and we've drawn out funnels, we have different ways that we can show you that as well. If you're looking at it on this piece of paper, it starts to become clear that wherever they arrive, there's a trajectory of where they came from. And you've had to put some effort into- Your pinky looks weird. Don't judge my pinky. You have to put some effort into getting that. So they, you didn't just advertise, for example, for this one, if you're following me. They didn't just advertise that product on social, they advertised a piece of content. From that content, they then advertised the product, which took them to a product page, which took them to a cart. 
That's a relatively simple funnel. That's not a complicated funnel. It can get quite complicated. So by drawing it out on a piece of paper and by thinking backwards, you can decide all the different avenues your customers could possibly come from and have a plan of action in place to catch them. So, okay. So a, a good way to do this is to actually go through your, um, uh, competition research, which we talk about in the Building Better Brand Masterclass. So you may want to go ahead and register for that and check that out. It's free um, for you to join and, and to watch the actual explanation as well as get a 44-page um, a ebook that uh, is completely editable. Workbook, but, yeah. Um, yeah, workbook, I should say. Mm -hmm. But another way you can kind of look at this uh, besides, again, because the idea is that you do the competition research so that way you can register for their emails, you can get their emails, you can check out their product pages, maybe even buy a product, see what they do, see what their thank yous are like, what their one-time offers, upsells, downsells, uh, cross promotions, whatever, right? You can kind of see, generally speaking, somebody that is in the same ballpark as you, uh, what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish, and you can kind of improve from that, tweak it to fit your branding, etc. right? You don't want to reinvent the wheel, you're just trying to kind of make it your own. Mm -hmm. Another really good way to think about this, in case you're still a little bit confused, is uh, like if you think about the attribution models that like Google and Facebook and all them use they all want to tell you that they're the ones that got you the sale yeah. right excuse me uh, for those of you that do like paid ads you're probably familiar with this so you can kind of think of a funnel because like Ed Darian was mentioning she goes oh well that's very simple and like yes that is true it is simple the problem with simplicity like that which is kind of like what I was talking about in the very beginning is that you don't know when you only break it down to that extent and you don't put in your emails and all the other stuff, you don't actually know what part is um, attributing to that conversion, right. right? So like, I mean, you can have some general ideas as far as like, okay, most people are going from my homepage to this product page, from product page to cart, from cart to conversion uh, over the course of 14 days or whatever. But the reason why I say you need to add organic ads to your, your funneling uh, paid ads, your emails, et cetera, et cetera, is because you want to kind of see based on uh, pixels or, or IP addresses or whatever, like where people are, are they going to your site and then the majority of them, maybe 75% of them aren't buying that day, but after the very first email they're buying. Well, now let's see, you know, is that that email, what about that email is so good that is making that 75% that didn't buy that first day actually go back to the product page and now 50% of those people are actually buying. Right. You know, how can I improve that? Is there another step I can add to it? And then of course, once you add that secondary email or a better coupon code or whatever, and you see that that percentage increases, decreases, you can kind of tweak it from there. So that's kind of what I'm getting at in terms of like, you don't actually want it to be too simple. Um, I understand the idea of a, like, oh man, this is super complicated and this kind of sucks too because I like to think of it as like, um, you know, in Iron Man, the very first, you know, he's creating the, the suit in the cave. Yeah. He has that thing where there's like four or five sheets of paper and when you lay them on top of each other, it makes the whole suit. Yeah. Like that's kind of how I imagine it. Like you, all of these things are like individualized pieces, but that old saying of, uh, the weakest link of the chain, yeah. right? Like you have to take everything together and figure out how you can manipulate the system or manipulate, manipulate is kind of a bad word. I'm not trying to say manipulate tweak. people, but like tweak your sales funnel, your, your emails, your advertisements, your organic posts, whatever it is um, to better uh, the conversion metrics. Yeah. So there you go. That's my opinion. Yeah, and I think that's great. And we go into a lot of information in the Building a Better Brand Masterclass. So if you wanna know more about all the different things that can make your business better, go to dncmarketing.org slash BBB Masterclass and register today. It's 100% free and it comes with, like Julio said, that 44 page workbook. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. We appreciate you and we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye.